With some of the basic theory behind us, let's take a close look at Photoshop's interface. This will be our neighborhood over the next six plus hours, so let's get the lay of the land. Now before we do that, I'd like to open up an image. There's a couple things we're going to talk about that'll make a little more sense if we can see an image on screen. So we're going to go to File, Open, and in the Project Files folder, in the Chapter 1 folder, let's choose our old friend Garden and open that up on the screen. Now in this lesson, it's imperative that your screen look exactly the way mine does. So what I want you to do is go up to the Window menu. Under Workspace, I want you to select Essentials. This is the default that Photoshop ships with, so you may be here already, but if not, if this does not have a check mark to it, simply select it. Once you do that, you should be looking at the same thing that I've got. Now if you've been playing around with the Essentials Workspace and it looks a little bit different, what I'd like for you to do is go up in the Applications bar, I want you to put your mouse over the name Essentials. It should be highlighted. On the Mac, I want you to control click. On the PC, I want you to right click. And I want you to choose Reset Essentials. That'll take the Essentials workspace all the way back to the factory defaults. So now we should be looking at the same thing on screen. Now, at the beginning of your Photoshop experience, the place you're going to spend probably the most amount of your time is in the Tools panel. So let's take a look at that. It's over here on the left. And we can see we've got a single column that lists the available tools in Photoshop. Now you can work in a single column view, that's fine. For the recording purposes here, that's spilling a bit beyond the edge of my screen. So what I'm going to do is here at the top, I'm going to click on the expand, these double arrows icon, and make it into a shorter two column tool panel. I'd like for you to do the same just to follow along, but keep in mind you can work in a single column, you can work in a double column, either one is fine. Now the tool panel, as I mentioned, lists the tools that are available to use in Photoshop. And already it looks like there's a ton of tools in here, but this doesn't even scratch the surface because if you'll notice, most of these tool icons at the bottom right have a black triangle. And if we click and hold for a half a second on that black triangle, we get a flyout menu that lists all the secondary tools. These are tools that are located underneath that same icon. There's so many tools in Photoshop, the engineers couldn't even fit them all with their own icon. So beneath the brush tool, we've got a pencil tool, color replacement, and mixer brush tool. Note also these letters on the far right. Here we've got the letter B. This is the keyboard shortcut for these tools. As you start to work in Photoshop and gain more proficiency, you're going to want to learn some of these keyboard shortcuts. If you press the letter B, it'll take you to the brush tool, press it again, it'll cycle you through the pencil tool, then the color replacement, and then the mixer brush tool. So this is a great little handy tip here. You can always remind yourself of what the keyboard shortcut is here. If we go to another tool, let's say the clone stamp tool here, click and hold for a second. We've got a clone stamp tool and a pattern stamp tool. So any tool in this tool palette that has a black triangle, you know that there are other tools hiding under there just waiting for you to use them. Now let's go up and take a look at the Applications bar. This Application bar gives you access to a lot of good features. You can launch Bridge from here, you can launch Mini Bridge, we'll talk about those in an upcoming chapter. You can view your guides, turn them on and off. We can even change the zoom level or magnification of an image. We could go here, set that to 50% right there. We can choose how we're going to arrange multiple documents. We can choose the various screen modes. We've got standard and two full screen modes. We'll also get to those in an upcoming lesson. Over here to the right, though, is where we have our workspace switcher. And this is pretty cool. This is new to CS5 in terms of how it's laid out, because not only can we get our workspaces from up here in the window menu, we can get them right here in this application bar. What I can do now is I can actually click on this double vertical line and drag to resize them. If you've got a lot of workspaces, because Photoshop ships with some defaults, but you can add your own, we'll talk about customizing your own in a bit, you can actually expand it, or what I prefer to do is really just drag this to the right and close it down. I'm not a big fan of taking up extra space, so here I'll just set it just so that our Essentials workspace is visible. Below the Applications bar, we've got our Options bar, more specifically our Tool Options bar. This is going to show you various features and options depending on the tool you have selected. So with the Marquee tool selected here, this is one set of options that we have. If we choose the Brush tool, we've got a completely different set of options. If we choose the Clone Stamp tool, a third set of options. So the Options tool panel is going to be a great place for you to go to adjust the parameters of the tools that you've chosen in the Tools panel. 
Now we'll move on to what's perhaps the most confusing aspect of the CS5 interface for those new to Photoshop. And we'll talk about panels and tabs. If we move over here to the right, we've got this dark gray bar. This is a panel. A panel contains tabs. All of these, navigator, info, swatches, brush, presets, layers, channels, paths, these are all tabs. They all happen to be docked within a single panel, which means that if I grab this panel, if I click, hold it, and drag, I can move this whole thing over as a unit. This is very handy because if you need to move something, if you need a little more space in your screen or move things over to the side, you can do that with one click and everything moves over. So inside these panels where we have tabs, we can access one tab versus another simply by clicking on it. If I go down here, I've got the swatches tab highlighted. If I click brush presets, that shows me my brush presets and I can go back and forth between the two. Now, what I can do with these tabs, when they're linked together like this, they're called grouped tabs or tab groups. If I double click here on the word navigator, I'm collapsing that tab group. So navigator and info are collapsed, giving me more room to see swatches and brush presets and the layers, channels, paths. If I do the same thing, double click on the word swatches, I've collapsed that preset. So now I have more room to see my layers, channels, and paths. If you've collapsed them and you want to expand them back, you simply double click again. So I'll double click on both of these and go back to where we were originally. Now, what you can also do with these tabs is you can unlink or undock them from each other. So if I select this navigator tab, click on the tab and hold it, I can drag this outside of that grouping. Now it's residing in its own panel. Navigator and info are now broken or delinked. I could do the same thing with, let's say, brush presets. I could bring that out, click and drag it over here, and now I've got two free floating panels. So the grouping that panels come with, you can change that very easily. Now what happens if you want to put some tabs together? I can click on this brush preset, drag it up over the navigator panel until I see a blue horizontal line, I let it go, and now these two tabs are linked. If I move the panel, it's moving both navigator and brush presets. I could also take brush presets, click and drag it up until I see a blue outline here, and I can make it part of the tab group side by side so I can simply go back and forth between navigator and brush presets in that way. So there are a multitude of ways that you can adjust the Photoshop workspace. The way Photoshop ships is not the way that you have to use it. And that's one very powerful feature of it is that you can customize it to the way that's most efficient for you to work. Now the last thing I want to talk about here is the application frame. And before we get to that, let's go reset these essentials so we can clean up our workspace again. Up in the Applications bar in the Workspace Switcher, I'm going to go up to the word Essentials, and on the Mac, I'm going to control click on the PC. I'm going to right click, and I'm just going to hit Reset Essentials. That takes us back to the factory defaults. Now, in the Window menu, let's go all the way down near the bottom, Application Frame. I'm going to select that. If you're on a Windows machine, you're already in an application frame. But on a Mac, this is something that's only been around for the last two versions of Photoshop. Now what has happened is that Photoshop is now contained in a single window. We can move the whole application around as one group. And you can see here it's filling up the screen. If yours isn't filling up the screen, you can click on this expand icon up here with the plus sign. Make that fill your whole screen. The advantage to this is that Photoshop in one contained unit blocks out your desktop area. So if you've got lots of files on your desktop, if your desktop is a sparkly blue that's distracting when you're trying to edit images, you can simply go up and choose application frame, block out any distracting elements, and you can work with Photoshop without any distractions.